So I'll show you another variation of this in an extreme form, which I saw only a couple of people did this in the other class. But again, it's, it's a common error that, uh, that people tend to make just because they're not aware of it or they think that it's okay, but in actual fact, it, it creates an impossible image. So what I'll do here is I'll just do an extreme example of it. I'll have my horizon line across here and I'm going to pick my corner of my box right here, but I'm going to put a vanishing point here and a vanishing point here, which are insanely close together. And so when I proceed to connect my points, if this is the end point here, this line will come up like this, like this, You can automatically see this does not look like a box. It looks like the front end of a ship or something like that because it's just too pointy. So the problem there is the vanishing points are too close together in relationship to the box and it forces this area here to become too sharp and it just it doesn't look right. It looks illogical. So you can never do this, never, just because it looks bad. Right? So always make sure your vanishing points are a good distance apart, and the default is 90 degrees. Find a 90 degree angle, and where those two lines go off and meet your, vanish your horizon line, that's where your two vanishing points will have to end up being as a minimum for the closeness of them. They can't go any closer together than those two points. Okay. You can go further apart, but you can't go closer. Yep, that's what we're going to do next. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to try that next. Okay. So now the next variation here is to take your vanishing point, draw a horizon line across your sheet of paper in the center. keeps sliding around here. So draw your horizon line right through the center, like this. Place your vanishing points here and here. So it's very similar to what we had last time. And this time, rather than placing the front corner that's closest to us in the center, what I want you to do is shift it off to the side. So put it about three quarters of the way or one quarter of the distance. So if this is half the distance here, put it about one quarter of the distance over here on this side. And once again, bisect it directly in the center. Choose whatever height you want. And then take your two end points to the opposing vanishing point. So for economy of drawing, if you know, generally speaking, what the width of your box is going to be, don't draw your lines all the way off to the vanishing point because eventually you're going to have to erase them anyways. So make a mental decision for yourselves to say, well, I think my box is going to be about this big and just draw a little bit beyond it. And go from the top and the bottom to the opposing vanishing point on the right hand side. Again, determine the depth of the box that you want to draw. And so we now have these corner points here that if it was a solid box, we'd be finished. But we want to show the finished perspective on this in order to show the relationship of the closest corner with the furthest corner away from us. We're going to connect our vanishing points to each of those corners and go to the opposing vanishing points. So again, don't draw all the way through. 
Because we know that the opposing corner is going to be somewhere in here, roughly. Connect up these points. We see our crisscross points through here. We connect these up. And that gives us our back corner. So now, because we've taken the box from center center, where the two corners were lining up with each other, what we've done is we've rotated our position in relationship to the box. We've slid ourselves over so that now we're seeing more of this face here and less of this face over here. We're closer to this vanishing point on the side. So now we're starting to see the inside edge, the inside plane of that back surface. It's beginning to rotate around towards us. Now obviously the closer you get to the vanishing point over here, so if we again draw our corner line on this side here, give it a specific height, and then go off to the vanishing point here. You can see how sharp this line is coming down here. And then we go to the opposing vanishing point on this side. It opens up the front face here so that we see less of So we begin to slice off this edge here. We can see less of it now. So we take those intersection points here and here, back to the vanishing point over here. this corner, the vanishing point where that bisects this point here, that gives us our end point there. So it begins to rotate it around. Now in this instance here, if this is our field of vision, looking at this box, we brought our vanishing point into our field of vision. This really should be a one point perspective. Because what's happening now is these two lines here are starting to pinch down and it begins to look slightly unnatural. So the other option that we have is that we can take the vanishing point that's out on the side here and we can slide it outside our field of vision even further, which would then take these lines and begin to make them more parallel to the horizon line, but still bending down to a vanishing point off on the side and it just begins to make it look a little bit more comfortable as far as the front shape goes. So if we do that, it takes that plane, rotates it around towards us a little bit more and then of course we have to adjust our corners back here. Which would then adjust our back plane slide it over slightly, like that. Okay? So it simply rotates that front face around towards us. So what it comes down to at this point is you have to make some decisions. Now, let's go through some of the steps just again, very, very basically. You find where your horizon line is in relationship to the object that you're drawing. So if you're making this up out of your imagination, you decide what's the object that I'm going to draw. Give it a name. Give it a shape. Have a mental image of what it looks like. And then you decide, am I looking at it from above? Am I looking at it from in the middle? Am I looking at it from below? Am I looking at it from just off to the side, way off to the side, further on this side, up towards the corner? You decide what's your relationship to the object itself. And then you place your horizon line appropriately within your field of vision, high, low, in the middle, figure out where your vanishing point is, and then decide where's that leading corner that we're looking at. 
So the leading corner that's closest to us, or if we're looking at the flat plane, we draw that flat plane. And then everything else goes back to the vanishing point. So you've got the three choices for the directions for where your lines have to go. Now, one of the tricks to this is that you have to give every single last line that you're drawing a name. Call it what it is. This is the left-hand side edge that's closest to me. This is the top edge that's closest to me. This is the right-hand side that's also close to me, but not as close as this one here. This is the bottom edge that's closest to me. This is the line that's going off into the distance on the lower right-hand side. Okay, you get it? You assign a name for everything. Once you've identified what the object is, and you give it a name, okay, it's like it becomes part of your family, and you're, like you're talking to it, and you're saying, okay, I want you to go here, because this is where you're supposed to go. Under normal circumstances, the line that recedes off into the distance, it's on the lower right-hand corner. This line here has to go to the vanishing point over there. And then you automatically know where it has to go. So what I'm talking about here is the primary rule of drawing. Whether it's perspective drawing, whether it's character drawing, whether it's life drawing, doesn't matter what kind of drawing you're doing. The primary rule is the mantra that I gave you last week. Anybody remember what it is? Nobody remembers? Think when you draw. All right? Write this down. Okay, I'm going to give you three simple rules that if you follow these, pretty difficult to mess up. Okay? And have them available to you so that you can continually call them back to memory. So that when I say to you, what's the primary rule of drawing, you don't just sit there going, duh, don't drool when you draw. Make sure you're awake when you draw. Hold a pencil when you draw. It's think when you draw. You have to be constantly thinking about what is the line that you're trying to represent on the sheet of paper. It has to mean something. And so you talk to yourself about what this line is, where it's going. Is it in the right place? Okay. So that's your rule number one. Think when you draw. Rule number two is the rule that we've been going over and over and over again. In perspective, your lines can only go in three directions. There are only three directions what you can write. If you find or create a brand new fourth direction for a line to go, you're probably in trouble. And you should be thinking, hey, what is this line and where is it going and why is it going there? As soon as you stop thinking about it, then you start introducing new points and new lines for things to go and you start making mistakes. Okay? So rule number two relies on rule number one that you're thinking about what you're doing. Rule number three is the overriding rule that governs everything. And that is, ask the question, does it look right? And it's a judgment call. Okay? It's a personal aesthetic judgment call that you have to make on everything that you do. It's either right or it's wrong. It looks good, it looks like crap. Okay. And how do you make these judgment calls? How do you say something is good or bad? Well, we all do it right now, right? Like how many of you have been up on the, the, the website or the, the Facebook page and people are posting up their artwork? We talked about this before. People are posting up their artwork that they've done and you make an automatic judgment. You look at someone's artwork and you go, hey, that's pretty cool looking. That looks neat. Or you go, whoa, that stinks. That's horrible. You can't believe someone drew that. You make a judgment call based on your personal aesthetics. And you usually compare it to something else that you've seen. Someone else's artwork. Someone that you hold in high revere. You know, someone, you know, like Michelangelo. You look at his artwork and you go, this is not Michelangelo. It's sort of like Michelangelo, but it's not. It's a poor imitation of it. Or, this is nowhere near Michelangelo. This is like my daughter Jordan could draw better than this, and she's six years old. Okay, that's how I relate. You know, so it's got a, a level to it. So we all do this on an everyday level. We do it with our clothing. When you put on your clothes, you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, "Hey, I look pretty good." Or you go, "Wow, I look like Ugh, this is awful. I got to change this outfit and try something else on." Okay, or the way you comb your hair. 
You wake up in the morning, you get bed head, and you go, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm off. <laughs> what? Some of you default to putting caps on, right? <laughs> bed head. So we make personal decisions as to what is right and what is wrong, what looks good, what is bad. And you need to start making those judgment calls on your own artwork. And you need to rely on each other to help make those judgment calls with each other as well. So you don't hide away when you're doing your drawing and say, oh no, 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 no don't look at my drawing. Please, please don't look at my drawing. It's not finished yet, okay? You let someone else look at it and say, hey, that looks pretty good. Or you know what? Maybe you can make a little adjustment here because your vanishing points are too close together. You didn't connect your corners in or something like that, okay? Point it out to the other person. Because we all have that internal voice, and we spoke about this before as well. We all have that internal voice inside of our heads. It's just that it's this meek little voice, right? So when you're doing a drawing, your voice will go, hey, excuse me, that line is not very good. Oh, never mind, never mind, I'm sorry, I disturbed you. Can you. Please continue, I'll just go back to what I was doing and thinking about something else. Okay. No, you gotta turn up the volume on it and let it be forceful. So when you make a mistake in your line, that voice will go, hey, stop, what do you think you're doing, you moron? That's a bad line, you gotta fix that or it's gonna look like crap. Fix it now. I'm shutting down if you don't fix it. Okay, I'm shutting down. Come and you're shut. <laughs> you have to be forceful with it and make sure that you guard yourself against doing bad drawings. At every point, every single last line that you do, you ask yourself, is this line in the right position? Is it going where I want it to go? Is it representing what I want it to represent? If you don't do that, then you're not following rule number one which is your primary rule. You've got to be thinking when you draw. Your lines can then go only in three directions. Make sure they're going to the vanishing point, points parallel to the horizon line or vertical, and does it look right? Okay. That will save you a huge amount of pain and it will also accelerate your overall artistic ability dramatically if you start following those three basic rules. I mean, there are lots of other rules that we're going to add on to it. Okay? But if you write down those three basic rules and always have those handy, or start to memorize them as a mantra over and over and over again, so that every time you sit down to draw, those are the three things you're thinking about constantly. You can't just idly let your hands go, because mistakes will happen. And this comes back to what we were talking about last week, was the idea of being professional. Professionals think about what they're doing. Professionals care about what they do. They aspire to be the best that they can. And so in that process, they try not to make mistakes. And if they do make a mistake, they correct their mistakes immediately. And the thing that you'll find with perspective is that as you go along, if you let a mistake go, the next line that you draw, and if you base it on that mistake line, it grows exponentially and it gets worse and worse and worse as you go along to the point where when you complete your entire drawing and it's all finished, and you sit back and you go, whoa, what happened there? You can trace it right back to that very first mistake you made, which you should have corrected, but because you didn't, the whole thing turns out bluff, and you just wasted a whole bunch of time. All right? So we've got to guard against not thinking about what we're doing and letting mistakes go and problems taking place. All right?